Today we're talking about the co-op games from 2003. But first, let's see what else was happening in 2003. Call of Duty. Beyond Good and Evil. Prince of Persia. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Tony Hawk's Underground. Simpsons Hit and Run. Jack 2. And for handhelds, we saw the Game Boy Advance SP and the N Gauge. Now let's look at the co op games. In Batman Rise of Sin Su, a beat em up game, Batman faces off against Sin Su, a strategist using Sun Su's principles to conquer Gotham City. While Batman fights well designed thugs, rescues civilians, and defuses bombs, the gameplay primarily involves combat. Batman's diverse combat system keeps things engaging as he gains new moves and unleashes brutal attacks. Players can choose to play as Batgirl, Robin, or Nightwing, with cooperative multiplayer available. The art style reflects the animated series, offering a dark dark yet kid-friendly atmosphere, with impressive character designs and animations. 3D beat-em-ups have always been somewhat of a mixed bag, but Batman Rise of Sin Su is definitely one of the better in the genre, and it can be played on the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. Blackstone came out exclusively on the Xbox. You're tasked with saving the world of Zidane, choosing from five character types, archer, warlock, pirate, thief, or warrior each with distinct strengths. The gameplay closely resembles Gauntlet, featuring intense battles against creatures, locating and destroying generators, and collecting valuable items like gold and magic scrolls to empower your character. While the controls are straightforward, mastering your power meter becomes essential. Although it's not the best dungeon crawler, it's still a lesser known Gauntlet clone that's worth exploring, especially when looking for Xbox exclusives. Another original Xbox exclusive is Brute Force. It's a tactical squad-based sci-fi shooter where you control four characters simultaneously on various missions for the Confederation. You could play through this entire game in four-player split-screen co-op. The graphics, with impressive elements like tall grass and well-made character models, and CGI movies, all were pretty high quality for the time. The game plays as a third-person shooter. Some levels lack inspiration, falling into overused themes like lava. Sound, though good, lacks a memorable theme, while voice acting is strong. The gameplay reminiscent of Halo's control scheme is a standout. Each character can carry two weapons and grenades, and you must strategize and select your squad members carefully. Linear gameplay calls for tactical thinking, offering various approaches to combat situations. Overall, Brute Force is a top-notch Xbox game that excels in gameplay, but falls slightly slightly short in other areas. Castle of Shikigami 2 came out in the arcades and then later on to the GameCube. It delivers a classic bullet hell experience, immersing players in a supernatural shooter filled with relentless waves of projectiles. The game continues the series' tradition of chaotic storytelling, where an interdimensional castle threatens Doomsday, offering players multiple characters and a plethora of bullets to dodge and fire. The game's tension bonus system rewards risky maneuvers, turning the fine line between life and death into an exhilarating thrill. Castle of Shikigami 2's aesthetic and eccentric characters add a unique charm. Despite the difficulty, the game's short levels and enticing modes keep players coming back for more. Double Dragon Advance reinvigorates the classic series by blending elements from various sequels while staying true to the arcade original's core gameplay. This Game Boy Advance remake introduces intricate moves, including dash attacks, intercepting enemy strikes, and a kneeling stance for added strategy. The game offers enhanced enemy AI in challenging encounters encouraging players to use their full arsenal of techniques and environmental advantages. Additionally, the expanded level design and boss fights showcase the game's evolution beyond its roots. With improved combat mechanics, new enemies, and refined environmental interactions, Double Dragon Advance proves to be one of the best games in the series. And the whole thing can be played in two-player co-op, if you have two Game Boy Advances and a link cable and two copies of the game. Dungeons & Dragons Heroes is an action RPG from Atari, set in the D&D universe. This came out exclusively on the Xbox. It provides both solo and multiplayer experiences for up to four players to combat a looming evil threat. Players select from fighter, 
wizard, cleric, and rogue characters, benefiting from a unique control system that allows on-the-fly customization of attacks and spells without pausing. This system enhances gameplay by promoting adaptability in facing diverse enemy types and vulnerability. The game incorporates typical RPG elements like inventory management and character upgrades, while offering visually appealing graphics and fitting audio. Dungeons & Dragons Heroes delivers an engaging multiplayer adventure that can only be found on the Xbox. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was an exclusive on the GameCube, offering a unique cooperative gameplay experience. Players select from various races, each with distinct strengths and weaknesses, adding depth to the gameplay. The Crystal Chalice mechanic forces players to stick together, creating a strategic element as they navigate diverse dungeons, face challenging boss battles, and coordinate in multiplayer mode. In order to play this game, you had to have four Game Boy Advances as well as cables to connect to the GameCube. Even though there is a bit of a barrier to entry just with the hardware required, it made for a really unique experience. Mario Kart Double Dash revived the beloved racing franchise on the GameCube, offering a polished and visually impressive experience. It introduces the Double Dash mechanic, allowing players to select two drivers with unique attributes and items, adding a strategic layer to the races. Being able to play this with a friend in co-op made for a really unique racing experience. The game maintains the classic Mario Kart formula with random power-ups and catch-up mechanics, making every race an exciting contest. While it lacks some of the innovation of earlier titles, it compensates with improved graphics, smooth performance, and an array of unlockable content. Battle mode provides thrilling duels, even though some maps feel smaller and simpler. But when it comes to local multiplayer fun, Mario Kart Double Dash remains a must-have for fans of the series. For me, this is my personal favorite of all the Mario Kart games. Shining Soul 2 significantly improves upon its predecessor, boasting 8 character classes, hundreds of unique items, 18 expansive dungeons, and a plethora of side quests, offering remarkable variety and customization. Players embark on a heroic quest to rescue the kidnapped princess by participating in a tournament to select a new hero. The real-time combat system remains engaging, enhanced by a forging system for crafting powerful weapons, and a charge-based attack mechanism for added depth. If you're a fan of Secret of Mana, this is very similar to that. With perhaps a little bit more dungeon crawling, and you could play through the game in four-player co-op if you have four Game Boy Advances. Hunter the Reckoning Wayward came out exclusively on the PS2. It's a sequel to the action horror game Hunter the Reckoning, and it builds upon its predecessor's foundation. Despite some technical issues and repetition of levels from the original game, Wayward improves its gameplay mechanics, utilizing a control scheme that enhances inventory management, the game's six character types, a variety of weapons and spells, and challenging nightmare difficulty provide action enthusiasts with an engaging experience. Wayward has a gritty atmosphere with detailed creature design. The audio complements the horror theme with eerie sound effects and an industrial-influenced soundtrack. Hunt the Reckoning Wayward offers an enjoyable action experience for both fans of the series and newcomers. That same year, the Xbox had their own version called Hunter the Reckoning Redeemer. It also had improved graphics and new characters, weapons, and abilities. This action slasher game continues the tale of hunters battling evil forces. Players control one of five characters, each with distinct abilities and weaponry, engaging in combat against hordes of supernatural enemies. The combat system utilizes both analog sticks, allowing players to move and attack in different directions. Redeemer offers the most enjoyment when played cooperatively with friends, as managing character abilities abilities and facing challenging enemies become key elements of success. It's still another great entry in the Hunter the Reckoning series. Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, developed by K2 as a true sequel to the series, successfully refines the core elements of the franchise, combining stealth, action, and ninjutsu into a cohesive, engaging experience. While it may not match the technical prowess of Metal Gear Solid 2, it stays true to its roots as a dedicated stealth ninja game set in feudal Japan. The intriguing narrative, incorporating multiple characters and storylines, provides depth, and the inclusion of new moves and abilities earned through a rewarding stealth reward system 
system, enhances gameplay. The level design shines with multiple paths, offering replay value and incentivizing exploration. The combat mechanics, while not groundbreaking, are solid, with well-implemented lock-on features. The addition of a multiplayer co-op mode is one of the game's highlights. Unfortunately, you can't play through the story mode in co-op, but the stealth-based missions that are built around two-player are incredibly addicting. Tenchu Wrath of Heaven excels within its niche, cementing its status as a top-tier ninja game. Factor 5's GameCube title, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, remains a cherished gem among Nintendo enthusiasts, delivering unparalleled Star Wars dogfights with exceptional detail and pushing the GameCube's technical boundaries. Its successor, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike, follows the classic trilogy storyline, allowing players to control iconic characters like Luke Skywalker and Han Solo in thrilling aerial battles, Imperial Walker missions, speeder bike races, and even on-foot segments. The game introduces advanced multiplayer options, enhancing its appeal. Rebel Strike excels in its flight missions, offering larger, more intense battles and polished controls. The cooperative mode is a standout feature, allowing players to enjoy the entire Rogue Leader campaign together. Visually, Rebel Strike impresses with detailed chip models, improved effects, and superb FMV sequences. Sound design shines, featuring orchestrated music, clear voice acting, and impressive Dolby Pro Logic support. This is another solid entry in the Rogue Squadron series, and one of the best co-op games on the GameCube. So those are some of the co-op games from 2003. What are your favorites? What did we miss? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you watch our video from last week, the best co-op games from 2002. Thank you for watching.